It's a nice sunny day out in Central Park and I thought, hey, why not do a video about the setup of my Sherman? Before I go any further, I'd like to say that this video is sponsored by Monorides. As you guys know, I've had a couple of issues with my Sherman. You know, I had rusty bearings from riding in the snow. I don't know what the fuck you guys are talking about. It's so easy. And then the second time I got hit by a car, the impact shifted my motors off the axle. And so in both cases, I used Paul's services because he is the E-Wheels tech out here in New York. I have to say that his services have been nothing but stellar. First of all, he has a car. So he drives around and picks up your wheel. That is very convenient and it's a very unique service that's provided by Paul. And second of all, in both cases, repairs was actually quite tricky. This isn't your shell swap. This isn't your average tire change. He had to take apart the motor. And in both cases, after getting the wheel back from Paul, the wheel functioned perfectly. No issues, rode super smoothly. The other thing I really like about his services is he's actually surprisingly fast. But the second time when I needed a motor replacement, within 24 hours, he had it up and running. There are a lot of other people who have used his services. So reach out to some of the other guys. You can decide for yourself if you wanna go to him for your wheel repairs. But all I'm saying is that uh, my Sherman has had two inner shell swaps, two motor swaps, and one rim swap. All of them were done by Paul and it's running flawlessly right now. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. All right, let's get into the actual video so I can show you guys uh, what accessories I have on this wheel and what additions I made to make the riding experience so much better. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is this horn. Now, I have a separate video that reviews this particular horn, so I won't go into too much detail. All right, so I actually have to interrupt here very quickly. Since the making of my previous horn video, I have actually updated the horn on my Sherman. So for those guys who are in New York, you might have seen me ride the Sherman with this horn, and you might have actually heard what this horn sounds like. This is that horn, and it's from a shop called Dat Shop, D-A-T Shop. Dat Shop is actually by this guy named Elvin. He's been a part of the community since the very beginning. He's more of an e-bike person, and so a lot of the guys out there who are riding Surons and Onyxes know him already from his amazing work modding the Suron and the Onyx spikes, including light mods. This is his latest invention. So with this setup, the horn now has a dual tone output and it's that high and the low that together make the horn give that signature car horn sound. This horn actually sounds exactly, and I mean exactly like a car horn. Beep, beep. 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 In terms of the workmanship, everything is sealed on the inside. So this entire rig is water resistant. It got caught out in a storm. I tapped this horn while it was raining. <laughs> yep, horn's still good and everything still works. Battery life on this horn is actually very good. I've had this mounted on here for the last three weeks. I use it a couple of times a day and so far I had not have to charge this horn at all and it's still as loud as the first day that I got it. I faced a particular challenge in terms of mounting this horn to my wheel. I love the remote, but personally, I just don't wanna have another thing in my hand. The switch is right behind this top smaller horn. So basically all I have to do is punch the horn and that gives it enough pressure to compress the switch against the seat to ring it. So now in terms of pricing, Elvin is charging about $150 to $160. You can order it from Elvin, but you can actually also order this from Mono Rides from Paul. Now, obviously, this particular setup is more expensive than the original horn, which is just the horn on the bottom. So you guys will have to figure out whether or not this upgrade is worth the extra cost. But if you think it is, definitely hit up Paul from Mono Rides or hit up Elvin from Dat Shop and they'll be able to help you out and get the horn to you guys. So the second thing I wanna talk about, which you guys probably already noticed, are these bar grips. 
I have them on both sides in the front and on the back. Now the reasons I have that are twofold. One is so that I have something to hold on to when I'm carrying the Sherman up the stairs in front of my apartment. Personally, having some sort of rubbery material to grip while I'm carrying it upstairs really helps. The second reason why I have these bar tapes is so that they can sandwich the clamp for the seat. And this way, the seat doesn't slide around on the rail. So with the bar tape, the seat really stays in place. And that brings us to our third accessory, which is the seat itself. The seat that I have on the Sherman is the Zoom seat, speed version. And you know it's the speed version because of this thinner front piece and the wider back piece. I honestly think that this seat is the best one in the business. I know that there are a couple of other options. Um, you have the official Sherman seat, which is uh, the half seat that only covers the back. I've tried that, don't like it. I feel like uh, my bum is about to slide off every time. It's just a very small target. It's not very comfortable. And then there are some other third party options out there. I know that there's one that seems very popular, which comes up to about two thirds the length of the zoom seat. It comes with little feet that rest directly on the plastic and you can flip the entire seat up in order to get access to the trolley. I think that seat actually has a lot of usability, but one of the reasons why I like the zoom seat is because it's super comfortable. The last reason is actually because of its design. Now I'm a heavier rider and so I've cracked the inner shells of all of my wheels up to this point. I used to ride seated on the Monster but I can only do that for several thousand miles before the inner shell cracks. So far, no issues with the Sherman, even though I ride it seated all the time. And the reason is this. On the Monster, for example, you're sitting on the seat and the seat lies directly on the plastic shell. And the shell is only connected to the structural component of the wheel, which is the motor and the pedal hangers via six or eight screws on the side. And so all of your force goes directly to those screws. And that's where my inner shell cracks every single time. Unlike the other wheels and other seats that I've had, the zoom seat is anchored on the rails directly. And so it bypasses the shell completely. And the force is distributed along the rails on both sides to connect with the pedal hangers. Because of that, I've never really had inner shell issues with this particular wheel. Next are the side pads. So personally, I have the Russian pads. You can also get this from the Guard Gnome if you are in the New York area. His particular Instagram contact, this NYC e-rider, as you can see on the engraving over there. So if you do get these pads, uh, you'll have to suffer with the fact that his name will always be on them. Uh, they're amazing pads though, very comfortable. I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely hated the stock pads that come with the wheel. Um, they're just a very hard compound and also very narrow. So I'm riding, I feel like my legs are locked in. I like to move around a lot. So that's why when you look at my pads, they look very deflated. There is barely any cotton in this. And in fact, in the middle here, there isn't anything. That's so that I have a little bit of grip when I need it. But for the most part, when I'm riding, my legs are not hugging the wheel. For these pads, uh, you have a zipper on the bottom that you can open. You can stuff or take out cotton as you see fit. And there are three different compartments for the cotton and so you can really customize how you want these pads to feel and they're leather and they're very comfortable on the skin they won't damage your pants for someone who's working in a professional setting those qualities are really important to me and that's why i really like these pads all right so last but not least i want to talk about these custom pedals these beauties right here on both sides obviously are the handiwork of Paul from Mono Rides. So when you have pedals on any EUC, they typically come in two pieces. There's a top that you stand on and then there's a bottom and both are screwed together. For whatever reason on the veteran wheels, even though the bottom piece is made out of metal, the top piece that you stand on is made out of plastic. And so what happened to mine is as I keep putting thousands of miles, they started squeaking. It made me very uncomfortable because it felt like it could come apart at any second. What you can do if you do have a Sherman and you want to upgrade this so it's a stronger pedal is you can go to Paul. He will take your pedals apart. He will replace the plastic top piece with a CNC milled 
metal piece and you can see it right here the second service which i would recommend as well is for him to install these spikes now i don't recommend getting spikes all the way through because like i said i like to move while i'm riding but at least install a couple in the front because if you're ever caught in the rain on the Sherman, something that I noticed is that I feel like the Sherman pedals, the grip tape in particular, is more slippery than the grip tape on other wheels when it's wet. I have a little bit of grip, but I can still maneuver my feet around if I ever need to do that. I know for a fact that uh, these have been working for me because I have been caught in the rain twice now and they work like a charm. So the last upgrade that I recommend on the pedals when you give your wheel to Paul and he'll do all of this in one shot. One of the things I love about the Sherman pedal, you have this indent on the bottom of your shell here and your pedal fits in there. But the problem is without anything to catch, I had to basically bend down and open it with my hands every single time. You know, sometimes that's fine. Sometimes it's wet. Sometimes it's dirty. Sometimes it's gross. Every single time you have to get your hands dirty to do it. And it's also just a huge inconvenience. And so this to me is probably the best upgrade that I've made to this wheel so far. Because now all I need to do, push on that and it comes out every single time. It's very reliable. It does exactly what he needs to do. Close. Open. Close. See how easy that fucking is? And what I love, and this speaks to the attention to detail, I've never asked him to do this. Not only did he spray this black to match the pedals, he put grip tape on the top <laughs> of the pushers so you can catch it with your foot more easily. This has been a lifesaver. You don't have to think about it, so... You know, it's been great. I use it every time I ride. Before I let you guys go, um, I do actually have to interrupt one last time. All right, so one of the issues I discovered once I installed these spikes on the pedals, after the installation, there was too much distance between the magnet, which is usually inside the shell, and the metal plate. And so when I closed it, it just kind of flopped open all the time. So I had found these magnets called the neodymium magnets. They're super thin, they're super strong, um, and actually they fit perfectly. There's a magnet in there, it's circular as you can see. I just put it on there, put a piece of duct tape over it, and now this is so strong that it actually grabs onto the plate very easily. That's not coming off, you see that? And so now I can operate this entire thing with just my foot. See, close, open. No problems. All right, so that is how I set up my Sherman. I'm gonna put all the links below. And if you guys have any additional questions that you wanna ask, definitely post them in the comments and I will respond to you guys to answer those questions.